All right, so our last section in chapter 13. We're going to talk about Lagrange multipliers. Um, so yesterday we did an example where, uh, just to, to look back really quickly, where we, the, essentially the problem was we wanted, we maximized, we maximized x, y squared, z. And we had this constraint that x plus y plus z had to equal 32. And the, the process we used yesterday was we used the constraint. Uh, I'm going to call this the, we used the constraint to eliminate one of the variables in our function. So we ended up with a two variable function. And then we used the, the procedures that we've been talking about, setting the first partials equal to zero uh, to, to maximize, maximize this function. Well, sometimes the constraint is too complicated. You can't, you can't eliminate one of the variables. Uh, so that, that process, that procedure isn't feasible. So we want a, another technique that we could use in that case to, to solve a problem like this where we're maximizing a function subject to, to a constraint. And sometimes we get problems where there, there are more than, more, than one, more than one constraint that we, have to, that we have to take into consideration when we're maximizing our function. Um, so Lagrange multipliers is, is a method that we can, that we can use to, to solve a problem like this where we have a constraint. Um, so <clears throat> it just gives us a different tool to work with for these maximization minimization problems. So when we're working with these kinds of problems, we call whatever the function we're trying to maximize, we call this the objective function. There we go. Um, so this is our objective function, and we call this the constraint, or you'll also see it called the side condition. So we're trying to maximize our objective function subject to the constraint or, or the side condition. So in this, in this case, our objective function is x, y squared z, and <coughs> x plus y plus z equals 32 is our, is our objective function. So in general, we are trying to optimize some function some function of, we'll say, three variables, x, y, and z, subject to some, constra some constraint. We'll say g of x, y, z equals a constant. So that's our that's our general our general problem is we want to optimize this function subject to a constraint. And sometimes we'll have more than one constraint as well. So let's look at a two-dimensional uh, or sorry a, a two-variable function example to to motivate what we do with Lagrange multipliers. So for this, for this we're going to look at, we have f of x, y, f of x, y, and we have g of x, y equals k is the constraint. Well, if we think of a two variable, two variable function and we have this g of x, y equals k, we can think of the graph of this as a level curve of g of x, y. So g of x, y equals k is, is one level curve. So this is, this is a level curve. So 
So we're going to graph the level curve g of x, y equals k along with several level curves of f of x, y. So we're, gonna, we're just going to graph some level curves here. So here are our axes. And this, is, this doesn't have to be precise. We're just trying to motivate, motivate the idea of Lagrange multipliers. So let's say that this one in um, this one in red, and it doesn't matter what it is. This is g of x y equals a constant. So that's our level curve. And now I'm going to graph in blue. I'll graph several level curves of f of x y. So we'll say our level curves look like this. I'm going to draw this one. So these are our level curves. And I wanted to draw this so that these two are tangent right here. And let's say this is f of x, y. The, this first level curve. Equals 1. This one is f of x, y equals 2. This one is f of x, y equals 3. This one is f of x, y equals 4. And this last one is f of x, y equals 5. So these are just level curves, some arbitrary level curve of f of x, y. So looking at this picture, where is where is f of x, y maximized on that constraint? At the point where they are, where they're tangent. So if, if we have this graph of the level curve of g of, x, g of x, y equals k, and we graph several level curves of f of x, y, the maximum value of f of x, y is, is this point where they're tangent. And if if my function went the opposite way, if, if my level curves started here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then this point where they're tangent would be where f of x, y is minimized. So rather than going uphill, our function is going downhill. So our function would be minimized at that point of tangency. So the maximum, in this case, and I'm gonna, just going to put in parentheses because I could label the level curves the opposite direction. The maximum or minimum of f occurs where the level curves are tangent. Um, <clears throat> well, if the, the value of f is larger out here, right? But it doesn't intersect the constraint at all. So we're looking for the value of f of x, y that is, we're, we're maximizing f of x, y subject to this constraint. So f of x, f of x, y has to be on this level curve. So we're looking for the maximum value of f of x, y on the level curve g of x, y equals k. So they intersect here and here, but the value of f there is 1. They intersect here and here, the value of f is 2. So right where they're tangent is where, they're, where the maximum value is going to occur. Anywhere else, if I go this way, if I go to the, to the left, f is getting smaller. And if I go to the right, then f doesn't intersect the level curve at all anymore. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, I'm just picking. I just picked arbitrary it values for the level curve. You're saying if it went up to between four and five, and then came back down and was tangent to four, is that what you're saying? Well, or if it was a straight line, like say somehow it was tangent to one, and then it makes a straight line mm -hmm. and then you move up towards the center. Well, it would make it would be greatest at the point you were as close to the end. Because that would work. It's not going to be tangent. But no, but it wouldn't be tangent to a curve straight. So what what's um, um what is what's the example that you're thinking of? You want to go? Okay. We'll make it easier to explain. You can draw it over there on the sideboard. Where? Back down that place. I'm just going to pause this for a second. All right, so, so our maximum, if we have this, and we, we decided, we'll, and we'll state it more precisely in just a second, if we have this smooth curve, the maximum is going to occur, or the minimum is going to occur where the level curves are tangent. Um, so what else, what else do we know if they're tangent? What does that tell us, what does that tell us about the functions? What do we know about level curves? The gradient is normal to all the tangent vectors. The gradients, stick with me guys. The gradient is going to be uh, normal to all the tangent vectors. So it's going to be normal to the level curves. Well these two are tangent to each other at the same point. They're going to share a tangent line. So the gradient of F is going to be normal to that tangent line. The gradient of G is going to be normal to that tangent line. So what's going to happen to the gradient of F and the gradient of G? They're parallel. The gradients are going to be parallel. So we're going to say at this point of tangency, F and G share a tangent. tangent line. So del F is parallel um, at that point. So we can say that <coughs> since they're parallel, we can say that they're scalar multiples. So we say del F equals lambda del G for some scalar lambda, and lambda is our Lagrange multiplier. So this leads us to our, our theorem and our method for using Lagrange multipliers. Alright, are we good? Are we good on or as good as we're gonna get for now on this development for um, where this comes from? Okay, so Lagrange's theorem. The Grange points, if you're talking about like mechanics, like planets, I think the Grange points are an equilibrium point. So Lagrange did a lot of same mathematician, just yeah, a lot of stuff. Different yeah, set of theories. Right. Okay. All right. So Lagrange's theorem. So if we have if f and g, we have to have they have to have continuous first partials. And F has an extreme value at 
at some point. On the smooth constraint, G of <laughs> XY equals K. <coughs> and we want we want the gradient of G not equal to zero, del G at that particular point not equal to zero. Then the gradients are equal at that point. Del F of X zero Y zero equals lambda del G at that point for some scalar lambda. And we call lambda lambda is the Lagrange multiplier. So using Lagrange multipliers, the method is the method is, is really it's it's really nice. It's nice and tidy and straightforward. Um, so our method we're going to um, if we want to find the extreme value of f subject to this constraint uh, g of x so we have uh, we want to maximize f of x, y, z Subject to G of X, Y, Z equals K. We're going to find our points, find X, Y, Z. And lambda. Such that del F. equals lambda del g. So we just end up with some with several uh, several simultaneous equations. So we set our gradients equal and we find x, y, and z and lambda that make this true. Then our second step is we just evaluate f at all of the x, y, z that we find. The largest is the maximum of f, and the smallest is the minimum. And we're talking about on the constraint. The largest is the maximum of f on the constraint, and the smallest is the minimum. So, so our procedure basically is set del f equal to lambda del g and solve our, solve our simultaneous equations. Find x, y, z, figure out which one is a maximum, which one is a minimum. So you use this when, you're, when you use this compared to the yesterday? Right, so the problem, the problem that we started with, let me just go back here. Yesterday we did this problem where we had these the three distinct integers. So we could use Lagrange multipliers on this problem. So we have this function, the subjective function that we're trying to maximize or minimize, and this is our constraint. So we could use Lagrange multipliers on this problem. And normally you would use Lagrange multipliers. It it would it would not be it would be easy to do on this. It was it was not too bad also just to eliminate one of the variables with the constraint. But sometimes we can't do that. You would have a more complicated constraint function. And you can't eliminate one of the variables. So it's just really complicated right. Or, or you could you could use it in this this case, and it, it would be a 
it would be a nice a nice method to use. Okay. All right. And I'm thinking um, usually a lot of the time with uh, with Lagrange multipliers, we think of surfaces intersecting. So we think of the, the maximum value of some particular surface on the intersection with another surface. The, the example that we were talking about when we were discussing it of a, of a straight line, so uh, that would be like a plane intersecting a surface. And that wouldn't be, one, that wouldn't be a very interesting constraint function because it's not really constraining the function because the plane just keeps going. So usually the constraint is some, some kind of closed curve that we're interested in. That, uh, and we want to figure out where on that closed curve our function is maximized. Um, if we have two constraints, we use the same the same process. And I'm going to say two or more. If we have G of X, Y, Z, and H of X, Y, Z. We just set up our <coughs> set up our equation del F equals lambda del G plus mu del H. And for this one, uh, we don't want del, del G and del H are not parallel. So if we have more than one constraint, we just add another term to our Lagrange multiplier equation. I guess we should put this as a constant, and this is some other constant. So our constraints are these, these constant functions. All right, so questions on our process. So it looks like we'll only have time to do one example. I'll do a, a quick example on Monday. Monday's just a review day. I'll do a quick example of a, of a two constraint uh, Lagrange multiplier problem on Monday, or I, I, I might also try to post that um, on post that on the website, post a video of that uh, later today. So let's look at an example of using Lagrange multipliers. So we have f of x y equals e to the minus x, y over 4. And our constraint is x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. So we want to maximize f. We want to maximize f, maximize and minimize f subject to this constraint. So we have two things that we have to do here. Because we have this less than or equal sign, our problem really has two parts. So we want to we want to optimize f on the constraint where x squared plus y squared equals 1, and we also need to look at the interior of the region where x squared x squared plus y squared is less than 1. So we have basically we have two distinct problems we have. On the constraint x squared plus y squared equals 1, and on the interior, x squared plus y squared is less than <coughs> So let's look at the boundary first, the, the boundary of the constraint. So on the boundary, x squared plus y squared, we're going to say g of x, y, our constraint 
equals x squared plus y squared, and that equals 1. So that's our constraint function. So we're going to, we're going to equate, or we're going to, we're going to say that the, the gradients, the points that we're looking at are where the gradients are parallel. So del f, the gradient of f, what's del f going to be? Negative e, e to the minus xy over 4. And we have something out front here? I have. Or no. No, y. Negative y. Negative y over 4. Negative y over 4. There we go. I hat. And similar term for our j component minus x over 4 e to the minus xy over 4 j hat. Uh, del g. Our gradient of g is going to be what? Two xi plus two yj. And we're going to say that del f on the constraints where the points we're looking at, del f equals lambda del g. That's what Lagrange's theorem tells us. So we're just going to equate components of this <coughs> equation. So we're going to equate the x components and the y components. So we're going to say that minus y over 4, e to the minus xy over 4 equals 2 lambda x and minus x over 4 e to the minus x y over 4 equals 2 lambda y. Now to solve this, to solve these two equations, anybody have an idea of what, we're, what we want to do here? Solve, solve for lambda in each of them, and then set them equal to each other, right? So for this one, I get 2 lambda. We'll solve for 2 lambda. 2 lambda equals minus y over 4x, e to the minus xy over 4. And that equals, 2 lambda here equals, um, minus x over 4y e to the minus xy over 4. So I just solve for 2 lambda in each of these equations. So now I have this, this equation, and this turns into something pretty nice. Anybody see the solution here? What happens to the x e to the minus xy over 4? They cancel. We can just divide that. Divide through. Negative 4y squared equals negative 4x squared. Negative 4y squared equals negative 4x squared. So x squared equals y squared. Negative 4y squared equals negative 4x squared. And on the constraints, we know that x squared plus y squared equals 1. So substituting this, our solution in here, we get. 2x squared equals 1. So x squared equals plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. Oh, sorry, x. x equals plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. And y squared is 1 minus x squared. So y squared, or sorry, y, from, from this equation, y is also plus or minus square root of 2 over 2. So on the constraint, our maximum values are going to come from these four points. We can have two positive, two negative, one positive, and one negative. Um, if we substitute these points into our, into our equation, so our points are 
I'm going to say plus or minus square root of 2 over 2, comma, plus or minus square root of 2 over 2. And these have the same signs. And I'm going to say for the other point, plus or minus square root of 2 over 2 and mi minus plus square root of 2 over 2. So our, our points have the opposite signs. There are four points. There are four points. Plus square root of 2 over 2, plus square root of 2 over 2, minus, minus, plus, minus, and minus, plus. If we substitute these into our, into our function, we're trying to optimize our function here, so I substitute these points in here, I get that f is approximately um, 1.1331 for, for the points having the same signs. And for this, these points, I get f is approximately um, 0.8825. So I'm just substituting these values into my, into my function. When they have the same sign, I get this value. And when they have the opposite signs, I get this value. So there, these are the maximum and minimum values of the function on the constraint, 1.1331 and 0.8825. Well, now we need to look at the interior. So this is on x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now we need to look on the interior. On the interior, we're going to use the methods that we, are, that we already have, have worked with. Find the first partial, set them equal to 0, and uh, find our critical points. So this, on the boundary, we use Lagrange multipliers. Our constraint was x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now we need to look at the interior. So on the interior, We have x squared plus y squared is less than 1. So we're inside that circle. So we're going to, use, we're going to look for the critical points using the techniques that we, that we already know. So f sub x, if I take the, take the partial with respect to x, we, we found it in our x component of our gradient was minus y over 4, e to the minus xy over 4. And we want that equal to 0. And our partial with respect to y was minus x over 4, e to the minus xy over 4. And we set that equal to 0. So what values are going to make these two partials each equal to 0? x equals 0 and y equals 0. So that's our only critical point. And we're going to run our second partials test to decide if this is a maximum, minimum, or a saddle point. So f sub. How do we know that these are on the interior? So they, these are just w these are the critical points of e to the e to the minus x y over four, and zero zero. I have x squared plus y squared is less than one, so we, we know that. Um. So this, this is what we're doing here is just, just like we've done with um, just when we had a function and we just wanted to find the critical points. So we're finding the critical points. All this is telling us is we have to ensure that the critical points we find are where x squared plus y squared is less than 1. So if we found x equals, x equals 5 and y equals 3, we would know that's not on the interior. Okay. So our second partial with respect to x is y squared over 16 e to the minus xy over 4. Our second partial with respect to y is x squared over 16 e to the minus xy over 4. Our mixed partial fx sub xy is e to the minus xy over 4 times xy over 16 minus 1 fourth. And at 0, 0, the critical point we found f sub x, x times f sub x, y minus f x, y squared is 0 minus a negative 1 fourth squared is less than zero. 
So what does that tell us? Right, so we have 0 minus, minus 1 16th. So when our discriminant is less than 0, Oh, no, saddle, saddle point. So f of 0, 0 is a saddle point. Not a maximum or a minimum. Um, and f of 0, 0 or a maximum and minimum both, I guess. f of 0, 0 is 1. So our, our maximum value was on, is on the boundary, and our minimum value is on the boundary. At, um, at, our, at, a, at the points that we found over here. So this is going to be our maximum, and this is going to be our minimum. So that second point, that second point, we didn't find the maximum or minimum in the Right, so if, if this would have turned out to be um, larger than 1.1331 1 or smaller than um, smaller than 0.8 was well, 0 so 1 we came up with 1 if it was smaller than 0.8825 then then that point that we found would have been either the maximum or the minimum. okay so our maximum is a maximum minimum is on the boundary at those points we found using Lagrange multipliers on the interior. The Lagrange multipliers only works if you if you're looking for a maximum minimum on a constraint. Okay. So if you have some kind of constraint. So all we had on the interior, the only thing that we had to worry about was that x squared plus y squared was less than one. So we had to find a point where x squared plus y squared is less than one. That's, That's not a constraint. That's just a region. So we're, the region is x squared plus y squared is less. So it's inside that circle. We had to make sure the point we found was inside <laughs> the circle x squared plus y squared plus one. If our point that we found was outside that region, then we would just say that's not in the region that we're interested in. All right. Um, I will try to get the, the two, uh, the two constraint example posted uh, by the end of the day. Because I think there are one, there might be one or two in the homework where you have a two constraint, um, two constraint example. So look for that on on the website and on YouTube. All right, homework. Page one seventy four.